Kia ora, welcome. Um, I'm Jill, also known as Tia Nian on Instagram and Ravelry. And this is uh, my YouTube channel, Cup of Tea and Yarn, and I talk about lots of things to do with yarn. So if you want to grab a cup of tea and, um, yeah, be about half an hour. Oh, big couple of weeks. Had lots on. It's been really good. Um, so exciting to do my class last week, which I told you about, um, which was a weaving one. Um, also caught up with Belinda, which was really lovely. Um, and some of the um, cafe knitting ladies, we had breakfast and uh, then we went to Knit and Stitch in Mount Albert and I hadn't been there and she, I think she just reopened and she got some beautiful yarns, so I'll show you what I bought later. Um, also popped down to into Auckland City to New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn and had a swish of some yarn there and bought some more yarn. Yeah, so it was, um, it was a really good fun weekend. Um, I have some finished objects. Ta-da! The one finished object. Here it is. So I finished my love note. Um, it's kind of... So I haven't washed it yet. So I haven't locked it in. But I have worn it. Because I wanted to see... I don't know how it felt. I really like it. So you, oh, my dress is brown. That's why you can see the brown underneath it. But, um, gosh, it's pretty. Uh, was it one who, I wore it because I wanted to know what the sleeves were going to be like, because I just did, like, just below the elbow. Um, so, I don't know if it's because I've worn it without washing it, but they've gone a little bit baggy. But I think I'm okay with that. Better than being too tight. And if I wash them, they'll be all right. I guess it's because it's, it's on the elbow bend where I've got that. Um, I think the yarn turned out really nice. It's quite quite shiny and um, yeah, you can't really see the flecks of it's got flecks of blue and purple in it. And just here and a bit of green. But it mainly looks black when I'm wearing it, which means you can like wear it with anything. So there you go. Feels like I haven't done a lot, but I've made a jersey which is good and I, I do like it I do think that the other day I wore it the wrong way round because I just kind of remembered that it's got a high low hem when I was putting it on before I was like mm, that's right there is a back and a front because there's no short row shaping for the um the yoke so um yeah I wonder if I did wear it the wrong way around the other day but I do like the high low hem let's see can I show you that no just just the boobs there we go Anyway, so that was my one finished thing, apart from my weaving thing, and some spinning, which is exciting too. Um, shall I show you my spinning thing next? This is beautiful. So this is some um, Die Happy yarn, which I got from Nana Cindy. Um, so the fibre, and I bought it at Fibertron. No, I didn't. I bought it at Unwind in Dunedin. Got Fibertron on the mind because, you know, it's only a few weeks away. But, um, yeah. So I've got two skeins like this. I haven't washed it yet. I'm not very good at washing it. It's so wet. So wet and cold. It's like, oh, if I wash things, it'll take forever to dry. It's, in, it's this afternoon's job. Um, <laughs> um, I love or the random colours, it's just like, wow. I didn't really, I could have, I suppose, done each colour separately because they were like in strips. So I could have separated it, but I chose not to. And I just went, spin it as it comes. I didn't even separate that way, which I normally do with a plait. I just grabbed a lump off and away. But it's incredibly pretty. I don't normally do purple, so it's got purple and orange in it, blue, white, turquoise colour, yeah, who knows what this will be, but I've got two of these, I haven't counted how much yet, just came off the Nitty Noddy just before, I haven't, not washed, not counted, so they're the ones still on the Nitty Noddy, that's pretty, I don't think it's my colours. 
might be. Interesting. Um, when I went shopping the other day, well, when I was in Auckland, with, and there's the ladies in the knit um, cafe um, group, and you know, I was, I was like, "Oh, pretty yarn," and you know, do I suit it? Um, and one of the ladies said, "Well, no, I wouldn't put that next to your skin." It's like, oh, I hadn't actually thought about something not suiting me because I don't usually care. I just wear it and go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to wear it anyway. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of interesting to think about colours and, and what does and what doesn't suit and what may or may not go well with other things. Yeah. So if it suits me or not, I might wear it anyway. Mm. It's very soft. I think my spinning's getting better, but then I've just realised that there's a little big lump of blue there. That's not very well spun at all. But hey, you know, I showed you that stuff that I bought from Ian the other day, oh, the other week, that was all thick and thin. You know, people pay money to have yarn that's <laughs> not perfect, so I paid money for yarn that's not perfect. Mm. Anyway, that's that. Um, I was kind of just doing all finished stuff and then other stuff after that. Hmm. Purchases and things. So my other finished thing is my bit of weaving. So I kind of did a sampler. Um, it was a fabulous class. Um, so um, Man Knit Tea did it. So he took the class. I think I'm, I'm just unpicking something here. Oops. Um, he's also does some really cool um, uh, machine knitting things and um, he released a pattern over lockdown for a hat which is really cool which I've got in my, my favourites to do at some point. Anyway, great class. Um, so it was Sowery weaving i don't know if i'm saying that right which basically means that anything goes and nothing can go wrong and if it goes wrong then that's okay so he showed us some different things to do um firstly we did the clasp with i don't know clasp weft maybe where you can change colors halfway so it's let's close like up and down like different colors on the same line a bit of that way so that was that was fun. Um, then I decided to stick some roving in, which I thought, oh, I really like how that looks. Um, we talked a lot about the type of yarn to have as the wool when you're making something like this, so that it sticks. Um, then I did some top crocheting so I kind of crochet oh, there you go, crocheted it along the top that was some um, spinning that I was had played with some thick and thin supposed to be but yeah I hadn't washed or anything so I just stuck it in um, we did how to do a side fringe I haven't, I haven't cut any of these so that you know, if if you are all blobbly down the side, it doesn't matter because you make a fringe. Um, I don't know any of the right words for these things, but we did this other thing where you you weave, wove, like a. It's called something special, but I'm going to say a plank of wood, and you like wove it across, so that it didn't weave all of the strings at once. Sorry, sorry Kirk, gotten all the words. <laughs> anyway, so it makes that sort of shape, so it kind of makes it all gappy, or on the other side it makes it look like that, which I quite like the other side. Um, I wanted it to be like that on the front, but this was my front, so I'm not quite sure what I did 
But as I said, he said there was nothing right and nothing wrong. It was brilliant. Um, then I made these little bobbles, little, little bobbles, with a knitting needle, and you just kind of pick it up and hold that while you're weaving, and then you take your knitting needle out and it leaves little bobbles behind. Then made big loops, again with that plank of wood. Um, so they can be cut and made into a fringe. Yeah. And by then it was kind of getting close to kind of finishing up. So um, I just did a lot of thin and fat weaving with some roving I'd taken. And just to seeing how things were. It was really cool to see how the colours were as well. So um, we used a lot of really thin yarns held together so like three three yarns held together so rather than go oh i have to you know i have to have one yarn that's kind of the same that was um you know the same kind of thickness as the the warp it was like you know just make some up and so yeah the three yarns held together kind of made the same thickness as the warp thread. So it was very good. It was excellent fun. And it was a very small group, so there was only six of us, which was nice. So, you know, we had, it was, Kirk was very attentive. And um, every so often, we had, we were sitting so that we couldn't see each other. So we weren't influenced by what each other was doing. But then every so often we'd stop and, and we'd go for a walk around and have a look and, um, and a, ooh, ooh, how did you do that? And, and then he'd show us some other stuff. So, yeah, it was a great course. Really, really well worth it. And I'm so glad I went. Um, I have not come back and warped up my loom yet. It's um, wanted to get this finished. And then I've started something else. But um, I was thinking about maybe doing that later on this afternoon. So, yeah, very cool. Right, so there's something else that I have um, cast on. So um, I talked last time about um, doing the ranunculus um, sweater, and um, and I talked about using this yarn, which was the Hani Huli 50-50 um, merino silk. So I cast it on in this. As you see, I made my little my little ball. And I cast it on um, and I think it would make a fabulous summer top um, but when I did cast it on was like three days ago which was like the coldest day that we'd had and, and you know frosts and like seven degrees or six degrees or something and I just couldn't do it <laughs> no I can't do I can't make a summer top at the moment it's just yeah it's not gonna work so I pulled it out and I cast on with an old favourite, the <laughs> um, um, possum merino and the, um, what do you call the other one, the holst garn held together, so holding those two together. So this is the Burroughs cardigan and it has now become the ranunculus. Um, I think that the possum merino and probably the other one as well, the whole scan as well, is a better yarn for the ranunculus than this potentially because I think you need something a bit stickier because it's so oversizey and um, right. It will, I think, if it's too silky, it will just hang rather than floof. <laughs> This is going to floof. Um, I've just um, separated for the sleeves this morning. Oh, I've got some new needles. So I went to, oh, can I talk about these now, even though they're in my purchases? And when I went to Knit and Stitch in Mount Albert, this is what I went for. I went for some number six, or six, sorry, six millimeter needles, which are a size 10. And I got Chigu ones, which I don't know if I've had any Chigu ones, you know, mine are 
my metal needles are all the a set of 10 for six dollars or something from aliexpress so yeah this is like my first like my first grown-up needles i like the shape of them i like that bend which is also why i like my cheap ones from aliexpress because they've got that bend in them it makes it easy that has a really long string wire what do you call those things circular bit I don't know what size it is. 40 inches. It's 100 centimeters. I think my other ones are either 60 or 80. So it feels like it's really long. I could probably wear it wearing these um, without having to put it on a um, some waist yarn to try on. But anyway, um, having measured other tops and this, um, the this bit here is I've got well a lot of space so it's going to be slightly oversized um just seem quite baggy around the front so yeah I think it'll have some oversizedness in it but not a whole heap I chose not to do any of the short rows so I had short rows at the front and short rows at the back and I've I decided not to do them I think it will be fine without them it seems to be fine. Let's be a little bit higher or something. I don't know. Um, I did notice just before I dropped a stitch. Excellent, right at the beginning. I learnt a tubular, tubular, tubular cast on to do this. So that was um, something fun and exciting and kind of frustrating. Um, for the first three goes, um, almost gave up. I, you know, three, I guess three strikes and then it's like, no, I'm not doing it. I'll do something else. So three times and yeah. But I do like this yarn in this top. Um, because of the possum is so light, it's, um, it's going to be quite a nice light but cosy jersey on these really big needles. Um, now I have mentioned before that big needles are I find quite hard on my hands and I have looked at Portuguese knitting as suggested I don't know about Portuguese, I don't know I don't give myself time to practice something before I actually pick up whatever it is I want to make so I'm just yeah, picking up and putting it down, it's growing really fast quite quickly so yeah, three days for this yeah, so far, if it's not been my only knit, I think that's pretty good. There was a time in the middle, in the middle, <laughs> about here, I oh, didn't really enjoy it. I've made loads of mistakes. Yeah. Um, the first round of textured stitches are all wrong. Um, but, yeah, only I know that. And you all now know that too, if you ever see me. I feel like, I feel like I've dropped a stitch there as well, but I can't see it. It's just kind of gappy. I think with these big needles, eh, it's like, I don't know where. It just needs a bit of wiggling. Anyway very easy pattern so far and I think I like it hopefully it'll work out as good as this I love this I think I like I'm going oh, maybe if this doesn't work I'll just make another one of these I do like this I like the pattern bit um, I like the sh I like how it sits I like the high low hem which I didn't think I would but yeah anyway that's the ranunculus. My other works in progress is this long thing where I just go round and round and round and round and round and it eventually becomes a cow. Um, I've probably done about that much on that one. Um, probably a bit more actually, maybe that much. 
So I probably need to have another of that about this far to go before it'll go round twice comfortably and I can pull it a little bit tighter on one of the rounds. Um, nothing much to say about that. It's my needles are quite sharp, <laughs> so I'm stabbing myself a bit. Um, I had a couple of nights where I kind of got a little bit despondent with what I was making, which was um, maybe this at the time. And I was just finishing this, and I was like, kind of a little bit bored. So I probably spent too much time searching for things on Pinterest and Instagram and Ravelry rather than knitting. But when I did knit, I thought, oh, I'll just do this because it's just round and round and round and round. So round and round and round. Um, very different things in it. So this one is, um, I think that one's an Anna Cindy one. Bit of leftovers of the go in the dark one. Next door to some, I don't know, maybe some, just some sock yarn. Anyway, that's that. My other work in progress is my, now I'm back in the office, my socks are growing a bit more. So these are socks for a friend and I've just, just started on the heel of the first one. So I'm hoping they're going to be big enough. Here's big feet. So when I looked up, when you told me what size his feet are, because I looked up, it said it was nine inches. This was just over eight inches, and then because I read also that to have good snug socks, you know, probably about an inch less than how long your foot is would probably work. I think I've read that right. Anyway, as I say, I've just started the heel on one. The one's just there. So um, I'm going up to Auckland again in a couple of weeks, so... Um, I hope to have them ready to give them. Yeah. And oh, I was going to say that's all my works in progress. Did I actually show you my embroidery? I don't know if I did. Here is my embroidery. Well, you can see the picture on it. So the picture was what I did off the um, using the carbon paper. Probably you'd see it better on the camera then you can actually see it in real life. But there you see, I did make a start on the top of that roof. So it's still there and you know I'm still thinking about it. There's that damn needle with the, the can you actually see how thin that thing is? Can you see it? Maybe not. Oh, probably going well. I can see that. See, you know, the wool through that gel. I can't. So, my embroidery purchases because I did go shopping. So, at um, Knit and Stitch, I bought some Malabrigo. I've not knitted with Malabrigo before, but a lot of people go, ooh, Malabrigo, so I thought, oh, why not? So I bought some sock yarn, and this is it. It's just beautiful. I don't know what this is. I think this is the one that the lady said, you need a different colour with it as well. So maybe some green or something, if I was wearing it up here. But it's, I just thought it was beautiful. I think it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. All those colours. It's very autumn-y. But also sunset-y. It's just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. No idea what I'm going to make with it. It's called Carnival. And it's um, Superwash Merino Wool. A little bit more expensive than I normally pay for my sick yarn. But as I said, you know, it was a special occasion. I was out and about in Auckland, so why not? It is beautiful. Um, so that's, I bought that and my 
needles from Knit and Stitch. That's right, Knit and Stitch was really busy. Um, so it was really, really good. Good to see a local yarn store be so busy. Um, my trip to um, New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn, which is in downtown Auckland, in the central, bus dis central business district, um, Queen's Arcade. Um, I had, and I don't know why I've been reading about it, because I don't normally read about things like this, but I knew about it somehow. Someone must have mentioned it. Maybe it was the New Zealand Fabrics and Yarn on their Instagram, I don't know. Anyway, I bought some Lara Moore Merino Romney. So what I think I read was that Lama Moore are the only New Zealand organic merino farmers but that might be wrong but I do know it's organic I wonder how you make organic wool I suppose the sheep would have to eat organically but we're not maybe the way it's dyed is organic so I just went ooh I'll buy some of that organic wool without actually going I wonder how it's organic until now but it's a pretty one so I got SDK so I've got three of these and so oh, not quite ready but I'll see if I can pull this up very fast. Um, one of the ladies at the Knit Cafe was it's not projects um, was knitting a scarf that was so cool and it's like oh I want to do that too. So um, I bought that to do this pattern and it's called Petals and Frills Scarf. I'll show you a picture. So it's got a nice little lace pattern and it's got a frill on it. Oh, oh how pretty. So I'm going to make that with that, which I think will be quite nice. The other thing um, I wanted to show you as well is that, you know, I'm expecting those five min five twenty five gram minis and um I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna make with them. Well now I know what I am going to make with them. I'm on it's my Pinterest now. Just in the wrong place. I'm not very good at naming things. So this is knitting things. It's in my knitting things folder. But I thought I could make this. I've got a scarf pattern that has bobbles off the end like that but it's I think it's an asymmetric one which I've tried a few times to make and I always think that I'm going to run out of yarn too soon and not make it as big as I want it to. Um, I believe it might be by the same person that does the hitchhiker one but I'm not sure. I just can find it. Um, Anyway, I thought I could use the five gram ones to do that and do the bubble because then I can just keep adding to it like the same as that roundy roundy one. Sorry, designer people, but I don't know the names of things. I'm going to be looking now and never find it. I just have one more page and if I don't see it, I'll give up and I'll just put a little blurb somewhere so you know what I'm talking about. So I'm sure a lot of things in my library that I haven't made yet. Sorry, there wasn't so many things in here I do want to make though, but I really like this one. I like waves. But no, it's not going to be that. That's not the one I'm talking about right now. Um, it's 
Oh, that one here though. So I kind of think about this one too, because I kind of like Miss Winkle with the little brown, the little things on the end. It's not that either, but it's something like that. I must be getting close. So I think I picked that one up around about the same time. Or I might have just imagined the whole thing. So now I'm like into my crocheting, I think. So, what's my crocheted one under that? Oh, anyway, I'll find out. I'll let you know which it is. But, and whatever. <laughs> That's the way I'm going to do it. I think that even if I can't find the pattern, it should be quite easy to do. It's just like if I do an asymmetrical scarf, do some knitting down and do like a bobble, like on my brown jersey on the end somehow and then come back it'll just be like a bobbly thing on the end so and anyway, that's what I'm going to do when all of these five gram things turn up so I'm quite looking forward to starting something new because I haven't got a lot going on I've showed you all of my things have I got anything oh no I haven't showed you my Clara Jane Clara Jane just is sitting there again I think she's a bit light to be wearing right now so she's just sits by my chair in the lounge and do a, a row or two every few days and one day I'll get to the colour work and that will be good okay so some oh, other purchases I've, I've showed you those purchases I have got some other purchases um I had that book out the library about the miniature embroideries which I thought wow that kind of suits my attention span so I ordered some little things you can get these little it's a triangle one what, little embroidery hoops but they're babies like so baby embroidery hoops so i've just got these like four different little ones so i thought i could play with that one day when i finish my other embroidery and <laughs> we'll see <laughs> I think those are the ones I thought, oh, I could use wool and just make some funky little designs. I think my friends might be getting funky little embroidery designed brooches Christmas this year. Let's see how we go. When I said I ordered a few, I happened to come at, in batches of like six or something. So I've got a lot of all different shapes. Yeah. But it's going to be fun to make things. I um, also bought the newest Nitty Knitter magazine. Um, I did like this shawl. It's very pretty. But because this was a bit more summery, I thought it would be a bit some lighter stuff in here, but it's still quite heavy. Like, mm, I don't know, does, is DK kind of a heavy thing to wear? I, just, I know this is. Well, I suppose this isn't that heavy. And it's got the two held together. But it's just in my head that I think the DK is warmer and fingering is not warmer. I guess that they use this, if you use the needles that are meant to be for that weight, it's as dense as each other. One just takes a bit longer. Yeah. I don't know. Thing. rubbish really this is so pretty so um my friend kylie sent me a class on how to do brioche i'm guessing that looks that looks like brioche because it looks hard i think it is which i have yet to do as well so there's something else on my to-do list also my creative fiber magazine came in the mail too look how pretty that is that's amazing eh? And they always have some really cool things. I had a, a lady talking about her weaving, which I thought was quite good. And um, there's lots of shops there. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of shopping because a couple of their things were cancelled early on. So the people that are um, that would have been at the um, events obviously aren't. So they're... Um, 
advertising in here so a lot of it is very cool ways to do places to go shopping I think that's all of those things I needed to talk about what I'm making, what I've made, what I've bought yeah so coming up so I believe that today in Greerton which is a little suburb in Tauranga they're putting up um, like in the whole of the little township they um, wrap the trees so um, in like uh, yarn bombing so I'm really looking forward to going up there so I won't go today because it's raining but um, it's not far from work so I might pop up one day in my lunch break take some pictures and um, yeah and see, and see how that is so that's quite a fun thing to be looking forward to and say so, and the uh, week after next time in Auckland for work so I think that would be good um, stay at my sister's and may get to I'd quite like to go and check out Lupine so Lupine Wool in Parnell has moved and they moved this weekend into a new premise so I'd quite like to go and have a look at the new shop um, but we'll have to wait and see if I get some time to do that Otherwise, I think that I'm done. It's um, oh, just just a little bit over half an hour, so there'll be no filling in with um weird little movies. <laughs> Her movies of the sea today is just <laughs> all done and dusted. Um, I hope everybody is well, and I'm sure that once I've finished, I'll remember something to have told you, and then I'll have forgotten by next time. But it can't have been that important. So, yeah, I hope you're all well and um, taking care of yourselves. Oh, actually, one thing I was thinking about was um, I was on a virtual knit night this morning and there's people from um, America, America and Canada and Europe, Germany, and um, I kind of forget that, like, life is normal-ish now for us here in New Zealand. And, um, you know, I get to go to the shops when I want and go and squish yarn and, you know, um, my class last week and I mean you don't walk around with people like people can wear masks if they want but not very many like you might see I don't know one person a week with a mask on and it's um, their choice and I bet people aren't wearing masks and you know it's just back to normal like yesterday I went out for breakfast and cafe was full and just everyday life but it's not like that everywhere and yeah it's easy it's easy to forget that so um yeah I, hope, I do hope you're keeping safe and um yeah I don't know what else I was saying then just blibbling apart from it's easy for us to forget here in New Zealand anyway I'll see you next time. Um, Kakite.